We've made it to Regan. Wait a minute! I just got a brain freak! It's summertime. And the ball takes. Helsinki, Tallinn, and now Riga. I swear, the further we make our way down, I feel like the weather is getting nicer, prices are getting a little better, and the people are getting a little bit warmer. back at it again making it to another baltic country on our journey from the baltic sea down to the mediterranean last week we were visiting its baltic cousin estonia this week we're in riga latvia bring it baby nice movement nathan 10 out of 10 you can do it <laughs> it's on the hips dude today is a day full of tourists we got our coffees we got two tours back to back two different walking tours and what are we seeing nathan we're seeing riga the whole city <laughs> yeah, we're seeing like the, the old main, town. Yeah, the old town. We're uh, seeing Moscow neighborhood. The market, the yeah. big central market, all kinds of stuff. But we're kind of going in semi blind as usual. So I want to start this off by saying that unfortunately it's not easy to go between Baltic capitals by train. Hence why they've recently taken on the monumental undertaking of building connecting train networks. It's not ready yet though, obviously, so we took a bus from Tallinn and that was easy and affordable. Historically, just like their other Baltic neighbors, Riga was also bullied and conquered by a different nation every 100 years. So they had it pretty rough, living at different points in time under Swedish, Danish, Polish, Soviet, and Nazi rule. And I thought my fourth grade teacher was brutal. Riga is the largest city of the three Baltic states and home to one third of Latvia's population. There's definitely a youthful energy and vibe about modern day Riga. Lots of trendy restaurants, specialty coffee shops. <laughs> kind of hipster at times, but we were very happy with the strong cafe culture. Thank you. <laughs> Three fun facts. Vikriga is the official name of the old town and has UNESCO World Heritage status. Latvia is one of the world leaders in internet speed. And Pringles were invented by a Latvian working for Procter & Gamble, so boom. I have a huge amount of trouble fitting my hand inside of a Pringle can. Damn, Riga! You showing up is a vibe. Riga so far seems like a really cool place. We've been here for a couple days now. Coffee seems really good. Food's really good. Yeah. Insane. Really? Insane. Oh, look at that. You gotta get some coffee, you know? We were so like jet lagged or bus lagged. <laughs> bus lagged. So we got here, we were both like, we need a nap and coffee. Again, people are a bit more friendly and like it's open. More relaxed. Yeah, more, more relaxed. relaxed. We're definitely getting more smiles, and not so much like, yeah. you know, head down just a little bit. People so. here are chill. What? But what's funny is like, you know, I'm so like typical Californian, just walking around, jolliest <laughs> a big smile. So sometimes it's not always taken so well in some, you know, ex-Soviet places, I think. Yeah. But it's just a difference of culture and I just want to learn as much as I can. If you're a fan of architecture in this city, man, you're in heaven. Yeah. It's literally like architectural paradise because you have all the styles in one place. Neoclassical. Art Nouveau, Soviet, everything. So when you come to Riga, you have to see the building behind us. This is the House of the Blackhead. It is one of the most popular buildings in the whole city. It's beautiful. The bricks, the gold, and the blue at the top. What we learned recently, it says Anno 1334. And on the right side, it says renovated in 1999. We learned from a local that this was never renovated, and this is actually a replica. So, I guess like one of the most popular things you can also buy here is like a magnet or a t-shirt or a coffee mug that has this building on it. And it's like this prideful thing, but the locals will sell you, well, not really. Alright, we have made it to Riga's Central Market. And I think what's the 
probably the most interesting thing about this market is that Riga bought these gigantic Zeppelin hangars from Germany after the war. So this all took place during the World War era and they repurposed these to essentially cover this whole market. So there's, I think, I believe there's four of these and, or five, five of these. <laughs> And like one of them's like for fish, one's for meat, one's for veggies, one's for clothes and like pharmacy stuff. It's interesting, Germany after the war essentially had no money. So they started selling a bunch of stuff off and Riga saw their opportunity to buy these Zeppelin halls and transform them into this market. This also happens to be the largest covered market in Europe. If you exclude Istanbul's Grand Bazaar. I don't know if you can count Istanbul as being in Europe completely because it's sort of split between Asia and Europe. So by that definition, it's the biggest one. There used to be a word, ringa. Ringa, riga, it's basically the same sound. And it means a loop of a river or a ring of a river. This place is such a vibe. There are so many young people here. The weather is like 75 degrees, super nice. So many people are like excited to be out. Look, there's just people everywhere. We are near their Monument of Independence, I think, Independence Monument. Nathan's getting some shots of these skateboarders over here, but yeah, I feel like we could easily spend a month or three or six here. There's so much to see and do. Yeah, I think I'm just like really surprised by the city. What do you think, man? It's lit. <laughs> it's lit. Summers are popping, man. Everybody's just out. I, I'm like so blown away because I didn't really, like I expected it to be way busier. Like there's gonna be a lot more tourists here. Yeah. So it's almost like, I don't wanna call it like a hidden gem, but like I feel like this place is gonna be the next European destination, especially in the summer. Yeah, totally. I know their winters are pretty brutal, like it's like negative 25 Celsius out here, but yeah. right now it just feels like it's 75, 80, perfect weather. Uh, coffee scene's insane, food scene's insane. The people's vibe, like they're way more friendly and just chilled out. Uh, and they like take their time to like kind of dress up and go out and yeah. like they have like style and flair and yeah, I love it. Like, these guys are just skating in front of the, the Freedom Monument. Like, it's just so cool. And there's lots of parks. Like there's a lot of parks where people are just like picnicking or, or drinking. We just passed two girls having a glass of rose. They, they got a bottle of rose and they're just having it out in the, the park. Sun, just living it up. You yeah. Know? And it's just like that's what it's about. And, and even with everything going on in the world right now, like people seem to just be living their lives and having a good time and making the most of it, you know. So Totally. And you've sat in that Asian squat for two minutes, so yeah, more my, power to you, dude. My patella's about to pop yes. off. <laughs> <laughs> You're serious. We are currently standing inside of a building named the Corner House, which was essentially the old headquarters for the KGB in Latvia. And the KGB in the US, we know them as like the Russian mafia, the Russian mob, but really they're considered the Soviet Union's foreign intelligence and domestic security agency but they did a lot more shady things i guess you could say and terrible things and this building sort of sheds light on all the things that happened here in riga and in latvia people they murdered the people they took prisoner it's pretty creepy and eerie to actually be in this building <laughs> it's going down Oh, it's nice in here. The station to wash your hands. It's so clutch. All right, little garnish. Did you get this? Pork sausage, potato, mushroom, and I think onion, maybe? Pancake with cottage cheese and spinach. Beetroot salad. This, they told us we have to try. This is a bread pudding. Ooh, they're fermented pink. Beet soup. Beet soup. <laughs> Rad radish and cucumber salad. This cabbage salad, and they both have dill, which I love. Sauerkraut, meat patty with like wine sauce. wine sauce. Oh, 
Mm. I think you're really gonna like that. It's like coleslaw, but without all the mayo. It's just like dill, onion. It's just light and refreshing. It's super good. Also, everything's like real food. It's yeah. not like in the States where it's like you can tell super preservative. You, you know what this feels like? This feels like a home cooked meal. Mm. If you want to like a Latvian home cooked meal, come to Lido. <laughs> Lido round two, baby. Coffee cream with vanilla sauce. Some kvass. Got soup, salads, ribs, home fries. I think these are little rye breads and garlic and butter. I went with the same thing I had yesterday with some home fries. This is the beef patty and the wine sauce. I think we went a little overboard again. All right, so outside of the pink soup that is kind of like their caspacho like Spain would have, these are two staples as well, and they're so freaking good. You have to try them if you come here. These are little rye breads, and there's garlic on them. I don't know if it's just garlic and butter, but they're freaking tasty. They're so With good. With soup, like you can dip them in your soup. It's so good. And this, this drink is very similar to like Coca-Cola, but not as sweet. I was not expecting to like this as much. I think it's made from bread, but... It's called kvass. Kvass, yes. We'll have to get all the names and put them linked on the screen. But it's really good, non-alcoholic. It's really, really good. Lido! <laughs> <laughs> 